Here we go. Let's get into the word. Say commissioned. commissioned. With more passion. Say commissioned. commissioned. We started this segment on last week, and now we're going to dive into duplication that leads to multiplication. But before we get into our base scripture, I want to set something up because many times when we think about Jesus, we only think from one lens. Jesus, yes, he came to be the sacrifice for man's sins. He did. But Jesus also came to be the access to abundant life. Not only did he come for our sins, he came for the, be the access to abundant life. Watch this. Jesus came to be the victory we now live in. Does anybody live in victory? Yes. Let me show you what I mean by Romans 8 and 1. Look at this scripture here. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Now that's a shouting moment. That absolutely means that what you are supposed to be judged with and guilty of, you are no longer held by that. Because watch this, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The amplified version, you might shout on this one. It says, therefore, there is no condemnation. Say that next part with great passion. Let's go. No one more time. The, the reason you didn't shout is because you act like you ain't never done run, nothing wrong. The reason you didn't give God a praise right there is because you don't understand what you're supposed to be judged with. When Jesus came, he took the punishment and the penalty away. So there's no punishment. There's no guilty verdict for those who walk in Christ Jesus. But then also, Jesus came to be a mentor and a model. I don't think we really look at Jesus as mentoring and modeling. When you think about the disciples, he mentored them. But not only did Jesus model something, he modeled the kingdom of heaven. Yes, he opened blinded eyes. Yes, he healed sick people. But he modeled how to do life together with people so life change can happen. How to do life together with people so life change can happen. Let's look at this scripture in 1 Peter 2 and 21. That's going to be our foundational launching pad today. It says, for even hereunto were ye called. Say, you were called. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow he said he suffered, but he left an example for us, and we're supposed to follow in his steps. Three simple things that we need to see. Number one, you were called. You were called. Number two, you're an example. You're an example. And number three, we are expected to follow his step, his example. Three simple things that we need to do. Number one, number one, read this and read this and let's go. I grew up in the right era. I grew up, I remember the first caller ID. You remember that? Come on, all the real mature people that grew up right. Come on now. Yeah, you got to know what a candy lady is to know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> You got to know what it means to go outside on Saturday and stay all day long. I don't even know what we ate, but we survived off $2 and water holes water. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about the people that grew up right. <laughs> but there was this thing called caller ID. It doesn't mean anything to you now because every phone has caller ID. When it comes up, come on, you're, lucky, you're glad now. It says scam likely, you don't answer. But see, caller ID, before caller ID, you had to answer every call because you didn't know who it was. And now caller ID comes out and there was this box that was hooked to the phone, that was hooked to the wall, that was hooked to the wall, that was hooked to the box, that was hooked to the phone, that was hooked to the thing. <laughs> And when you got home, the first thing you wanted to do, you just want to know who called. So you're scanning through. Want to see? Want to see who called? Want to see? Want to see who? Called. But if you were home and you didn't want to talk to your auntie, I mean the person, you would ignore the call. Watch, because I don't want to hear what you got to say. 
how many of us are ignoring the call that Jesus is making to your life because you don't want to do what he told you? I thought y'all would clap a little bit better than that. Number two, number two, number two, don't think he suffered just for you to be successful. We think that Jesus died only for us to have abundant life and forgiven sins. That's not the only reason. He suffered so you can be an example of how you do life with other people. And then number three, number three, follow the leader. Discipleship, this is what we're talking about. Discipleship for all of the people that are bored. Hang on, I just got a few more minutes to bore you. Discipleship is not merely teaching doctrine, but modeling a life transformed by the gospel. And the reason that I say this is boring is because we've made church about us and not others. And so when I'm not getting my song, when I'm not getting my word, and right now, pastor, my family is going through stuff, and pastor, my marriage is dealing with this. You should have came last month. Pastor, I need this, and pastor, I, we always have some type of personal need, right? And when we, we say it's a good sermon when you preach to me. We say it's a good sermon when you help me unlock the key to my breakthrough. We say it's a good sermon when we come and we get our release and we cry, but we don't make it a good sermon because if Jesus was about himself none of us would be free but Jesus came and he was about other people his whole mission was for you his mission was not for himself he even told you I'm not here for me I'm about my father's business but star, but star, I'm guilty, I'm guilty. I've taught people how to use their faith and they're not about their father's business, they're about building their own business. Because faith gives you results. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and if you use your faith, you're gonna get some things. But now that you've got your things, are you commissioned? Look at the person beside you and say, he talking to you. Look back at him and say, no, he talking to you. Leave me alone. I just said, hey, this is your second week in a row talking trash to me. I don't even know you like that. The essence of discipleship is not found in mere words alone. The essence of discipleship is how you live your life and you become a letter. The Bible is a book of letters. You become a letter for other people to read. Watch this next statement. It should get you at your core. Watch this. Before people read the Bible, they will read your life. Before people read the Bible, they'll read your life. They'll read if the love of God is a real thing. They'll read what forgiveness looks like. They'll read what long suffering looks like. They'll, they'll read, when other people read your life, they'll read what peace looks like. Because to them, when they see your life, watch me, watch me, it becomes more real and it's not just words. Philippians 4 and 9, it says, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, what's the next part for it? It says, do. Once you do what you've learned, what you've received, what you've heard, and what you've seen, and the peace of God will be with you. Here's my questions to ask you. Number one, do you listen to the word? You gotta ask yourself that, do you listen to the word? No, you don't listen to the word. You know what you listen to? Riri and Bay and Drake, a little shotgun. Little Uzi, little sniper, little hand grenade, little bullet wound, little stab mark, little stretch mark. You listen to the stallion, you listen to the pony, you listen to the racehorse, you little felony, little misdemeanor. You listen. Some of you, nah, I, I, I listen to the word. I, I listen to the word. Okay, okay. Next one, next one, next one. Do you hear what God is saying to you? 
Because the Bible says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Don't just listen. You need to hear. And then after you've heard the word, do you apply the word to your life? See, this is the separation from kingdom people versus church people. Church people think you're preaching to everybody else but them. Tell them, pastor. Preach, pastor. You walk in heaven, God. It's tight, but it's right. They don't want to hear. Tell them, say it again for the people in the back. No, I'm talking to you, big man. I mean, lady, ma'am, sir. I'm talking to you, Miss Big Mouth. Got all the mouth, no action. No, say he's talking to us. And I'm not talking about I'm talking to you. God is talking to us. How is it that we are a fast-growing church? How is it that we've added thousands of people since the pandemic? How is it that we're buying new facilities? How is it that thousands of people come to this campus every single week? How is it that we have more students over there than the average church in Atlanta? How is it that we have more kids upstairs than the church you grew up in? How is it that God is doing all of this and we're not turned on about getting more people into the kingdom. How is it that God is so good to us and we're so focused on ourselves? How? Here it is. Do you apply the word to your life? Here, here, here's, here's the problem. Do you share the transformation that's taking place? Most of us, we don't share the transformation because we're embarrassed. See, uh, testimony, not bragging, because again, the Bible says, my soul make her boast in the Lord. The humble share here thereof be and be glad. Here's what I've learned. Anytime you testify, if people aren't humble, they're going to think you're bragging anyway. This is the humble. So, so I get invited to a lot of different arenas and I get to facilitate a lot of stuff and I'm a keynote speaker and all of this stuff. I'm a strategist and I'm an expert in this and I praise the Lord. And then I stand up and say, hey, I failed my SAT. And they like, who invited this dummy? <laughs> How is this dummy that can't even pass a standardized test finna tell us what we need to do? No, that's part of my testimony. That's part of my testimony that even though I failed in a moment, that moment didn't become my future. And I walked around for years embarrassed. Embarrassed, like I didn't want nobody to know that I failed my time. And I'm thinking, and see, when you have an insecurity, you think everybody views you through that. Ain't nobody even said nothing. You're like, what, you think I'm fat? They ain't, ain't nobody even said nothing. You think you fat. No, so I'm, I'm thinking, everybody thinking I'm done. But when I start saying, hey, a moment in life does not define you. Amen. Then it becomes my testimony. Who could you free if you would stop acting like you're so perfect. Do, 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 do you know why people will listen to marriage advice from Lady C and I? It's because we tell them the days that we were immature, stubborn and selfish and, and, and conceited and, and, and not a partnership. We were together and just fussing and arguing. And, no, and then we let them know what you see now is a result of God, discipline, and work. But some people, I'm finna mess up and then I'm gonna preach. Some of y'all, you live filtered lives and not factual lives. You wanna post everything to make it look and then when it don't look right, you try to filter it out. No, 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 no. We see it's ugly. And some of you need to say, just like the song used to say, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. We can stop right there, meaning I'm not what you see right now. 
I need a, I'm going to come over here. What you see right now, this is a lot of God on me. What you see right now is a lot of the Holy Ghost in me well, because I was once a wretch. I didn't move like I moved now. I didn't see like I see now. I didn't act like I see, act now. God did a work in my life. What's the whole point in sharing that? I don't want nobody knowing my business. The Bible says we overcome by the words of our testimony. Not only is it beneficial to you, it's beneficial to the hearer because if the hearer can hear that God did it for you and you still have crazy, I know God can do it for me. The root of discipleship is discipline. And so, one of the things we need to see with discipline is that you must first be discipled before you can disciple others. In this generation, we want deployment, but we don't want development. We, we just want to go. We just... Do y'all see how many people became professionals and gurus and business owners and life coaches in the pandemic? All you needed was a phone. No qualification, no certification, no training, no nothing, and, and find somebody on Fiverr to make you a graphic, and all of a sudden, you're a life coach, and you don't even have a life. But the thing is, you have to understand, transformation is a process. Say it's a process. Right. Let's look at how transformation takes place. We, yo, we good? Everybody good? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Number one, how transformation takes place. Let's go. You have to acknowledge a given depth. Most people will never change because they won't acknowledge that something is deficient. You ever tried to help a person and they wouldn't acknowledge their error? Every deficit that you justify is a deficit that will meet you in your future. Once you acknowledge a deficit, you need to, you need to have a seeking a model. You need to seek a model. You need to seek a model. Ushers, can y'all help me out, please? You need to seek a model. You, you need to get around someone who's modeling the life that you desire to live. Okay. Then that's all Jesus was to the disciples. He was a model, right? Then, then you have, you need aligning with practices, not emotions. Understand what I'm saying to you because most of the times when it comes to mentoring or modeling or coaching, a lot of people think this is some type of friendship where I tell guys that, that want to be mentored by me, follow me with your faith, not your feelings. You follow me, I am going to hurt your feelings because I don't care about them. I'm all about results. I don't care about how you feel. Well, you could have said it differently. Well, you want to keep sucking or not? It's like, <laughs> I don't, hey, um, uh, no, I don't, I can't even do that. Like, I, don't, I just, it takes too much work. Hey, dude, cut that out, man. Oh, okay, cool. No, I, I, I follow my pastor with my faith, not my emotions. And see, you want the practice. Most people want partnerships. If you're learning from someone, how dare you bring them down to your level to think that y'all can actually be partners? My, my, one of my coaches called this week, his secretary called, she said, hey, it's time for your next round of coaching. It's $400 an hour. You ready? My coach is $400 an hour. It's 45 minutes of talking, 15 minutes of, of, of note taking. And when all he get on the phone, he don't say, hey, how's your day? How are you, you feeling good? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Ha, ha, ha. This is so great. Hey, I saw your workout video. No, ha, ha, ha. No, it's none of that. He get on the phone. What do you got? And if you ain't got nothing to say, he going to get off the phone. 400. <laughs> but when 
you don't want the practices. You want to get through and process emotions. A mentor is not your counselor. A mentor is a mover. Let me say this one more time. I'm not saying your counselor cannot move you, but most counselings and therapy is just a sounding board of how you feel. And once you get it out, they're like, don't you feel better? And you're like, yeah. But my question is, did you move? A mentor moves you. And it's not about how you feel. How many of y'all got a workout coach? Somebody works you out? Do they ask you, do you feel like doing two more? <laughs> hey, hey. I know, I know daylight savings time just changed. And this is our first workout. Do you care to do burpees today or no? <laughs> They're like, movement, give me three more. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> say movement. movement. Here we go. Then being determined, ooh, this is good, to go to distance until needed and necessary change is achieved. Most people never seek transformation. It's because things are better. They're not great. And when it gets better and it's not as bad as it was, you stop because better has satisfied you. You can't stop just because it's better. You have to keep going because you could be forfeiting so much more that God has for you because it's just better. Oh, I can pay on my bills now. What if God wanted to make you filthy rich? By not being satisfied with better. Okay, here we go. And then allowing time as a tester of your transformation. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes transformation doesn't happen is because we look at time as a bad thing versus it testifying that I have changed. Because if I've changed and I can withstand that long enough, then time is a testifier for me and not a problem. Okay, okay, okay. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, transformation, I want to say this to you, is not perfection. When you're being transformed, let's look at what transformation is when it's not being perfection. It, it says that transformation is not perfection. It's an, imperf it's an imperfection that's submitted to a proven process of purification. So there's something that's imperfect. We've acknowledged it. That was the first step. That submitted itself to a process of pur a purification. Let's go to release uh, untapped potential that will align you to live out your purpose. All right. So now, as we're looking at this, most people never get to purpose because we're never commissioned. We're just church. And I'm part of the problem. I've grown up in church all my life. And I was taught, get saved, be holy, and leave church so these people don't know your business. I never did life with the people I went to church with. My parents, you know, you see people in the grocery store, hey, and going about your business. And Perfection never takes place. How, how is it that the people that love God, redeemed by God, don't want to be around each other except for at church? And we give each other a, a fake smile and a wave. We know nobody's name. Hey, girl. <laughs> Sis. What up, dude? What's up, bro? Oh, what, uh, uh, yeah. What, what up, man? Don't know nobody other than hey. But we're all on the same team all going for the same goal, all living for the same God. Oh, this is going to bring us up. Pretty much experiencing the same life challenges because you know why? We're fighting the same devil. Don't think your marriage is special. No, <laughs> no, no. Y'all may have put in more work than somebody else, but you had to put in work to get where you are. Anybody that has a good marriage, ask them. They put in work. They didn't just wake up and like, oh, no, this is just... Now, you got some people been married by six months. They'll fool you. They don't know no different. All they got is love and lingerie. They don't know no different. They, they ain't been through nothing yet. They don't, they, they, they don't know nothing yet. They, they don't know nothing yet. Don't, don't, don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. But what I'm saying is the Bible talks about one chases a thousand to fly. Watch what happens when we duplicate. One becomes two. 
Now watch where the multiplication comes in. Two chases 10,000. Yeah. Right. Right. Somebody say, we need each other. We need each other. I want to give you some challenges to discipleship. One challenge is cultural resistance. We live in a culture that prizes independence over submission. This culture is all about being independent and, and, and just do it yourself. We, it, it prizes independence over submission, knowledge over transformation. This culture tie can make the call of discipleship counterintuitive and challenging. How are you telling me now to be submitted to a proven process by Jesus? This isn't Pastor Campbell just trying to force us to do stuff. Because see, if I was just a preacher, I'd just say, let's just keep having churches working. We got three services, let's grow to four. We just bought a building let's buy another one the, the, the church process is working but is the kingdom process in action no I'm, I'm, I'm exposing me like the pastor thing is grow a big church okay well God has done that in so many in so many you know forms and purposes God has blessed us like we good during the pandemic I did the math and I think we could have not had church for like 11 years and three months and our church would have been fine financially. And everybody was like, come back to church, come back to church, come out. I was like, they ain't got to if they don't want to. I mean, I want you, but from a pastoral, because see, what, what people don't understand about pastors is they tell you, okay, get your church, get the 200 members. And when you get the 200 members, depending on the quality of the membership, you can have a decent church. Yeah. Then if you get the 300, you're solid. I never listened to any of that, Miles, because you know what? I didn't get into it for the membership. I got into it for the call. And so now that we've five, six, seven X the membership number, seems like you would be satisfied, Pastor. Seems like you wouldn't be bothering us. We invite our friends. Seems like you know, we wouldn't want more people because that's just more parking problems. As a matter of fact, can we do daylight savings time again because we actually got a seat this Sunday. Let's adjust the time one more week because, man, the traffic, I didn't, it wasn't no traffic out there today like it normally is. This is good. That's church people. Commission people say, what can I do about this empty seat beside me? Commission people say, okay, this is the service that most unchurched people are coming to, giving their life to Christ. I know this is my preference, but I'm gonna to go to another service so more unsaved people don't have to sit in the overflow. They can come in here where God is making it happen. I see, you didn't see, you ain't hear nothing on that one. It's... Here's some challenges to discipleship. Fear of inadequacy. I feel like I don't measure up. I feel like I'm unqualified to disciple others. Remember, it's not about being perfect. It's about being committed to grow and relying on the Holy Spirit. Then, number three, time and commitment. How many people in here right now by the show of hands just have an extra, let's say it's 72, let's see, it's 24 hours in a day. How many of y'all just got an extra 12 hours in a day? You ain't got nothing going on. Just, you, just, you just got 12 hours of free time. Okay, not a hand. Okay, maybe online. 10 hours of just free time in a day, just nothing you just okay i got one person say I ain't got nothing to do that mean you retired ain't it baby yep 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 everybody else on your row hates you but i love you okay just how many of y'all just eight hours i ain't got nothing to do i just sleep and walk and just look at the stars how many ain't nobody okay just the one okay we got two people that's we kind of hate you over there too okay but the rest of everybody is pretty much saying my life is full. Where y'all at? Come on. I just, okay. Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. Guess what? Full life, people, that does not exclude you from being a part of the Great Commission. It doesn't. It doesn't exclude you from being a part of the Great Commission. Please stand. Lack of confidence. I fear I'm going to get rejected. I have a lack of training. I'm going to train you. A misunderstanding of the role. Put number seven up there. 
Some may view discipleship, disciple making as the sole responsibility of clergy and church leaders, not recognizing it's a call for all believers. Here's my pastor's points, and we're going to go. I told you, this is not God's about to do for you, but I'm telling you, when you get hung on this, you'll see God do things for you could not even imagine. Christianity is dying not because other voices are louder. Christianity is in a deficit is because we've stopped duplicating. We blessed. Bless me again. We blessed. Bless me one more time. Prayer works. Pray for me again. Faith works. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Let's get some more things. I'm not against things. I like things. I want you to have things. But Jesus didn't die just for us to get things. He said, I modeled this life. And we saw the scripture. I want you to be an example. The Bible says we have a fiduciary responsibility that after you've been strengthened, you're supposed to strengthen your brother. How can men, men, how can iron sharpen iron if iron never has any time to conflict with the other iron? I'm going to give y'all a 10-second break. Y'all come here. Virtual family. I'm not against Faith Nation. I know some of you have joined this church from another state, and I'm grateful. But I want to challenge you. Some of you, you still have a pandemic approach to ministry. Your whole thing is to get on, click, hear a word, and go. You're not fulfilling the Great Commission by hearing a word for you and going. And so now... You don't get on the stream because you don't want to hear worship. I get it. I understand. If it ain't mixed right, don't sound right, I get it. But if the word is good, you want it. But if it's not a word for you, you go to four, five, six, eight other churches. And all you're doing is you are a church smorgasbord. And you're just running around getting full and you never feed anybody else. I went to five churches today and none of them convicted you to get in circles with other people. None of them convicted you that you're doing life outside of what Jesus died for. And I'm not a pastor that's enamored by big crowds and new building purchases. It's not what this is about. God is saying, this has to be a church that disciples make disciples here we go and, and, but I'm not mad either I'm just, just preaching I love y'all y'all like pastor mad them, them numbers is low no it's not about numbers being low it's I want all of us to get the fullness of what God has for us here we go three practical steps for making disciples number one read it let's go so Elder Ron was here first service and so uh, there's a gentleman actually he's in the building right now and I talked to him and Lady C's talked to him talked to his wife Lady C's talked to his wife and interesting dialogue came up after a couple conversations said Elder Ron said such and such and such okay e -e Elder Ron and we we're walking through the Bible hmm Elder Ron said, blah, 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 blah. Now, if I was church, I'd be upset, Jay. Because Elder Ron ain't Pastor Kim. I'm the pastor. I'm the, hold on, let's go old school. I'm the founder and pastor. <laughs> and when you say founder, you got to do that. I'm the, I'm the founder. Wait, no, no, let, no let's, go, let's go church. I made Elder Ron an elder. Let, let's go there. And he didn't check with me first to meet with, watch this, my members. You, 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 you mean you had the unmitigated gall 
to worship my authority and meet with another member without the understanding of under my auspice? You know what I heard? When I heard Elder Ron said this, Elder Ron said that, I said, go, Elder Ron, go. After you finish with him, get two more. Y'all are meeting, they're having breakfast, they're going through the word, go, Elder Ron, go. Go, get you some more. That's what you have elders around you for. That's what you have wisdom people for. So discipleship, where iron can I can't meet with everybody. God, it's just too many people. But when you're kingdom, you're saying, yes. When you're church, it's a problem. He identified and he's investing. Seek out those in your sphere of influence who are uh, open and, and, and reliable and those who show hunger for spiritual growth. Invest your time, energy, and resources in their development. You don't have a Bible, I'll get you a Bible. Number two, number two, number two, teach to follow. Woo, this is so good. Read this right here. Discipleship is more than teaching to know. It's teaching to follow Christ. And we've gotten in this society of, I know this, and I know this, and I know the hidden books, and I know that, and I know the name of the first slave ship, and I know this, and I know the book of Maccabees, and I read the book of Noah. Do you know they're keeping from you the book of Enoch? And you just got knowledge, and you're not following Christ at all. You're not a follower of the word. You're not a doer of the word. You're just a hearer, and you don't do it. We're teaching people to follow Christ, not just have puffed up knowledge. This isn't Bible quiz, church, faith, center. Number three, number three, number three. Come on. Follow, follow, follow. One more time, let's go. Follow, 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 follow. One more time, let's go. Follow, 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 follow. That's a problem. That's a huge problem. Men, come here, come on. Men, come here. That's a huge problem. Because you know why? We want to act like we got it all together. Your girlfriend will tell us you ain't, you ain't got it all. We don't want to be vulnerable. We, we, we don't want to say, hey, man, sometimes I'm the man, but I don't know what I'm doing. Sometimes we say, hey, I'm the man, but I don't know my next step. I'm, I'm the man, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, 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 I get fearful sometimes. We say, you know, sometimes I, I, I'm, the, I'm the man, but I, but I don't, I don't, no, be vulnerable. My first discipleship was with the elders. We were in the back and we're walking through the word. And within 30 minutes, we all in there talking about stuff from when we was 12, talking about our girls. Me and him put our, both our girls on the altar because they about the same age. We put them on the altar of what did y'all do? <laughs> when y'all girls was this age to keep y'all out of prison. Yeah. 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 Didn't we? Me and him. Absolutely. And we got good girls love them, but it was like, I got shotgun shells in my pocket. What, what, what do I? <laughs> then you got other elders, they talking about their fathers. It wasn't the lesson, it was just we were vulnerable. Yes. And I wasn't in there as pastor. I was in there as a brother around the word to just grow in Christ, and when we all left, we all left better. We all left healed. And watch this. Everybody had to make a sacrifice in their time to be there because we're just like you, busy. I want you to put the QR code up there. It's not a part of the message. But the way we work this out is our discipleship groups. The way we work this out is our discipleship groups. This isn't about numbers. This is about the opportunity for you to grow in Christ. And I'm gonna say something as a pastor. I'm frustrated with my people that know the way. You've been in church. You know the word. You know what this is about. And you're so focused on being how it used to be 
versus what God wants it to be. And you got all these people getting saved every week and they need somebody that'll get around the word with them, not try to preach to them like you perfect. You ain't got no three simple things. Just read the lesson and grow together. But you know, I, I don't need to do that. I, 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 I know the way. Yeah, but you're supposed to show the way to other people. If you're going to facilitate or learn or just come, I, I, need, I need you there. And then we're going to do this push for everybody to get in groups. This is going to be the greatest semester of people in groups ever. All right. All right. Scan this and meet me here next Saturday. It should be as many people in this room should be here next Saturday. Pastor, I'm too young. Meet me here next Saturday. Pastor, I don't know the word like that. You're perfect. Meet me here next Saturday. Pastor, I'm shy. Exactly. Meet me here next Saturday. Pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm working through some stuff and, and God's not finished with me yet. He ain't finished with the person on your left or your right. Meet me here next Saturday. They used to sing an old school song, say, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet look at the person beside you and say I can tell I can I can tell I can tell <laughs> I can tell it I can I, I see that thing I wasn't gonna tell you but since you know let's pray all eyes close our heads bow father seal this word in our hearts where we don't just listen but we hear and we take action.